you have reached Red Steel's awesome toy collectors review. I'm your man, Red Steel. And today I'll be doing a review on Megatron. Guess which one? The Kingdom one. That's a beast. Transformers Kingdom War for Cybertron Trilogy Megatron Beast. But before I get into the actual review, I just want to go over some of the finer details on the package. Up front here, a typical display window showing you Megatron and all of his content inside. Up here in front, you have a beautiful illustration of Megatron, the Nemesis, and Megatron in his beast mode. Then on the side here, you have that beautiful montage of Kingdom starting with a side-by-side -side profile of Galvatron and Megatron. Over here, you have Unicron, and below him, you have Megatron Beast, Black Arachnia, Predacon Scorponox, Dinobot, and on the other side here, you have the Nemesis again, you have Rhinox, and in the center here, you have the Golden Disc, and below that, you have Autobot Arc, in the center here, you have Optimus Prime, and to his left, you have Optimus Primal, Cheetor, and Rat Trap. On the other side, you have Air Razor, Bumblebee, RC, and Tigatron. And on the back of the box, you have all the figures features, such as Megatron in his robot mode, and Megatron in his T-Rex mode. Transformers Kingdom Leader Class Megatron Beast. Megatron's Hasbro ID number is WFC. Dash K10. His Takara Tomy ID number is KD-04. Megatron was released on March 18th of 2021, and Takara Tomy released their version on April 24th, 2021. Megatron was sold at a suggested retail price of $52.99, and he's available at all major retailers. Megatron was released along with other Transformers Kingdom. Leader Class Wave 1 figure, Optimus Prime, and it was also re-released during Wave 2 along with Ultra Magnus. Megatron is a Beast Wars inspired figure that converts into his T-Rex mode in 27 steps. His accessories include his golden discard and instructions. Megatron stands 8 inches tall and is meant for fans ages 8 and up. Now I'm going to go ahead and transform Megatron into his T-Rex mode. And the first thing they want you to go ahead and do, they want you to go ahead and bring his arm out like that. In the bottom claw right here. It's a little hole right here. And a tab right at the bottom of his forearm. They want you to go ahead and open up his claw. So you just tab that right in. And you go ahead and you take the tail end. You turn it so the green parts match up with each other. So both green parts are facing up. Then there are two panels in the front of the tail back of the tail. And there's a tab on each side, and there's a hole on his forearm. You go and you flip that right in so it tabs right in. You go and do that to the other side. You have a tab right here, you have a hole down here, and you go and just tab that right in like that. Then what they want you to go ahead and do, they want you to go ahead and take his beast head, and they want you to go ahead and turn it so the head's down, like that, and up. And you go and you turn your figure around. Okay, for the next part of the transformation, there's this purple panel on the back of Megatron's head. They want you to go ahead and flip that up. Then there's T-Rex arms right over here. They want you to go ahead and bring those out. Like that. And like that. Then you go ahead and you turn Megatron back around. Then at his waist right here, you go ahead and you untap it. Like that. Then they want you to bring it up and fold it forward. Then they want you to go ahead and take Megatron's head and just flip it all the way back. Like that. Then they want you to take this whole top portion right here and turn it. Like this. So Megatron looks like that. Okay, for the next part of the transformation, it's a little tricky. Get these two side panels right here. You go and bring those out. 
Then underneath them, you have these purple panels at the very top. You can go flip those out, and I try to clip them on that purple piece behind Megatron's neck to hold them into place with a spring loaded for some weird reason. Go to this side. So they're being held up by this, that panel right here. Then the next thing they want you to go and do is they want you to fold everything into the center. And it kind of becomes more of a shell former where you have to make it meet in the middle. And this Megatron's made out of like a weird rubbery plastic, so it's very flexible. It should all come into place. Not perfect, but it'll come into place like that. Now for the next part of the transformation, you go on turn around Megatron. Over here on the bottom, you got his torso right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that apart. In my figure it takes a lot of force, and the first time I did that, I had to get a piece of metal and pry that apart. But I've done this off camera a few times, so now it's become a little bit looser, but still it takes a lot of force. So you eventually want to get the torso to look like that, and it tabs all into place. Then you want to go ahead and turn on Megatron, and above his torso, his waist, the piece holding them together, you got the tab right here and a hole right inside of Megatron. You don't want to go ahead and push that back in. That should just tab right in. And I used so much force it kind of pulled apart a couple of the other panels, like right here. Then the next thing they want you to go ahead and do is you want to swing the legs down. And on top of the hips, you have this purple panel right here. I want you to go ahead and pull that out, swing that down, and push it back in. It taps right into place. I want you to do that to the other side. You got the purple panel right here. Pull that right out. Swing that right down. Just tab that right into place like that. Get my trunk legs down like that. The next step they want you to go ahead and do, they want to take the tail and rotate it all the way around so the green part faces up. Then you got this part holding his wings together right here. Go on and bring that all the way out, untab it, and there's a couple holes right here and right here. Got a couple tabs right here, right here. You just want to go ahead and bring that down like that. Then you got this purple panel right here. You want to rotate it enough. Whoop. Got a big shell former. The shell former is pretty much a transformer where the outer shell becomes one of the transformations and this figure has a lot of that going on. Kind of like reminiscent of the old Beast Wars action figures from the, the 90s. A lot of them were shell formers. So you take this shell right here, you kind of rotate it so it goes over the leg like that. Bring everything together, bring his arms down, you got his mouth like that, it opens and closes. And now you technically have Megatron in his T-Rex mode. Now that I have my Megatron in his Tyrannosaurus Rex mode, and on my display table, I'm gonna go rotate him around so you guys can see what it looks like from all angles. And note, you can see a lot of daylight between all the panels. I mean, they sacrificed a lot in his Tyrannosaurus Rex mode to get a cartoon accurate robot mode and it shows with this figure. I mean there's some cool features like when you open this jaw up, both, both sides go up and it reveals the, the blaster right there. But I mean, like, let me pull them in closer. You can see like a lot of the panels. It was, it was rubbery plastic, so it was a softer plastic, so it moves around for the articulation. But you'll see like a lot of the panels just don't go into place. They just don't fit and you see a lot of the kibble right here. Yeah, it just was not a great transformation. And I mean, Hasbro and Kenner both know how to do Tyrannosaurus Rex toys. I mean, they've done it with Grimlocks. They've done it with the original Beast Wars toy. And I have to say, the original Beast Wars Tyrannosaurus Rex mode is much better than this one. I mean, this one it tries to get the more of the realistic look to it, but in the cartoon look to it. I mean, they did some good stuff like... I mean the eye detail right here, it looks like they molded a different plastic underneath the purple here to make the eyes and the mouth and the tongue and you know some of the articulation is much better but it just like I said to make the robot mode look cartoon accurate they sacrificed the Tyrannosaurus Rex mode that's that's just my opinion on this figure even the transformation was very difficult as I mentioned during the transformation his his crotch piece was very hard to pull apart during transformation. I actually had to get some to pry because I felt like I was going to break the legs off when I was trying to pull it apart the first time. And it took about 20 tries before I could just get it out by pulling it with just my sheer force. You know, I mean, I still use a lot of strength to get the, the, the crotch piece to split apart. Now that I have Megatron 
in his robot mode and on my display table. I'm gonna rotate him out so you guys can see what it looks like from all angles. And one thing to note, that everything that comprises his dinosaur mode is packed away in this backpack. And Megatron is a perfect example of a shell former. And a shell former, like I mentioned earlier, is pretty much a transformer where a bunch of panels just fold around one of the modes and forms the alt mode. And in Megatron's case, all these panels pretty much form around his hand and his legs to form the dinosaur. Because I do not recall if Megatron had a hand or arm in the original cartoon series, but I do remember the toy not having a hand. It was pretty much just a claw tail and a dinosaur head. And you know, a lot of the Beast Wars toys get the flack of being shell formers. And I am not a Generation 1 purist. I love all Transformers. I love the original Generation 1 toys. And those were a lot, a lot of those were just boxes. You know, that, that, that you pulled apart and they're just, just boxes. But, um, you know, Beast Wars was guilty of being shell formers. But I got into Beast Wars as an adult collector and I bought all of them. I think I'm only missing two or maybe three uh, Beast Wars figures. I know a couple of them are from that the, the, the hybrid beast where they're part dinosaur, part robot. Because I think I remember I have the, the wolf that's part robot, part part wolf. But I can't remember what those four... Then they're Japanese exclusives. Because I have the entire US run. And I think I'm missing just a couple beast machines. But, um... So I am no way biased towards Generation 1. But I have to say... You know, with this transformation, as I mentioned earlier on... I had to actually get a, a little um, piece of metal and pry this part apart... And it took me a couple of tries before I could get this part pulled apart with my own sheer strength and I still use a lot of force to pull that apart. So I don't see a kid picking this toy up and being able to play with it or not getting frustrated enough where they just put it down and never pick it up again. Because, you know, children get that way when they can't figure out a toy, they can't play with the toy, they put it down and they never pick it up again. So I would not recommend Megatron to a kid. And even to a collector, I'd kind of be like, on the ropes about Megatron. I mean, he looks great in robot mode, but are you willing to pay the price just to display him in this mode? Because in this dinosaur mode, it's really difficult to pull off a good dinosaur mode, at least with this, this sculpt. I do enjoy the original. I would recommend the original Beast Wars Megatron because I thought that figure was great. I mean, he wasn't, the robot mode was not cartoon accurate at all, but it was still a great toy. And unfortunately, I don't have my uh, Generation or my Beast Wars Megatron to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I know he's out in Walmart right now. They uh, released a vintage series. I would recommend that toy over this toy. Because there are a few from this series I do enjoy. And I have to say, Kingdom, with a lot of the Beast Wars toys, they were lacking, to me at least. Like Cheetor, Rat Trap. I had a difficult time with Air Razor for some reason also. But you know they had some gems too. Like I, I do like Optimus Primal. I felt, I felt Tigatron is top notch. If they could have pulled off a Cheetor with, uh, with the same quality as they pulled up Tigatron, I'd be for it. But I think, you know, with the Dwarf for Cybertron trilogy, they produced a lot of gems with that series. But to me, a lot of the Beast Wars figures kind of fell flat. You know, like Dinobot came out really well. You know, he's very cartoon accurate, and he wasn't really a shell former either. He actually transformed into his dinosaur mode. So there are a, a couple good ones, but for some reason with this Megatron, with these the rubbery plastic and the panels just not fitting into place in this dinosaur mode, I'm not very big on this figure, and he's very loose. I mean, I, that might be just my figure. I mean, I pull his arm up and his whole body bends backwards, and his, his, I mean, his head doesn't stay up, so I might return this one and get a new one. Now, I'm hoping it's just a QR issue, but, you know, and if, if I'm incorrect, then I'll go ahead and... and do a rebuttal for Megatron, but I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up another Megatron, give it a try. I do have the exclusive ti uh, Target version of, of Megatron. I think he's red. I've got his name. I've yet to review him, but I'm not gonna review him until I get a good Megatron. Here's some late breaking news. I told you guys that if I find myself incorrect about my review on Kingdom Megatron Beast, that would film rebuttal. And here it is. Let me bring out my old Megatron. I mean, he was very loose, as you can see. Panels didn't fit together right. And this crotch plate, oh, it takes a lot of force. I mean, it takes a lot of strength for me to pull apart. So I, I did not recommend this toy, to, especially children and for collectors. I mean, I was very disappointed by this figure. And you know, I know, you know, I, I gave a lot of the Kingdom Beast Wars figures a bum rap. You know, there's a few good ones. 
And I said that this wasn't one of them. And I went ahead and I bought a new Megatron. And here he is. This one's much tighter. I mean, his, his dinosaur head sticks up. And I know my review is his head comes up flopping down. And when I move a limb, I mean, his whole body would move. I mean, his whole foot, you know, he would just collapse. And pulls his legs apart, takes no force whatsoever. So I just happen to have a bad, bad copy of Megatron, which I'm going to go ahead and return. Um, but this Megatron, is, it's, it's, it's a good toy. It's a nice toy. The, every, every flaw that I saw during my original review does not exist with this newer figure. You know, I played around with him, I transformed him. I mean, everything, he's nice and tight. Um, the crotch piece comes apart very easily. So I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend this toy to collectors. I think this is a, a, a good 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 addition to the Kingdom line. And like I said, Kingdom produced a lot of gems, and this is this is one of them. I just happened to get a bad bad copy with the original review. And with my reviews, I review my figures right out of the box. I you know I, I don't open them up, and play with them for a long time. I just as as I'm doing the reviews where I'm I'm exploring a lot of the options, same as what you guys are seeing on camera. So this figure is, is a good figure. And I would say, get your Megatron while you last. But if you guys found any information in this review valuable, please like and share this video. Also, if you really enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified of any future videos. Thank you for watching Radsteel's awesome toy collector's review. I'll check you guys out next time.